Hey guys, welcome to the lesson on coronary artery disease where I'm going to help you understand what it is, what the effects are, and how it's treated. So coronary artery disease involves the buildup of plaque in the main vessels that lead to the heart. Primary causes include high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and the sign is chest pain. This just shows a picture of the buildup of plaque in the vessel walls. So I'm going to give you a timeline to give you an explanation on how this coronary artery disease process works. So this is our vessel, and say we have high blood pressure, it's going to damage the vessel walls by damaging the tissue of the walls. So during the second phase, inflammation is going to actually occur. So we've got damage on the walls already, right? So then it's going to start to thicken, scar tissue will form, and it's going to create a much narrower pathway for our blood to get through. Okay, so we've already had our damage, we've had our inflammation, and now we are going to have plaque start to stick to the walls in here. So guys, just remember plaque um, comes from the fats and lipids that are in the bloodstream, okay? So those with higher cholesterol are going to have more plaque buildup, right? So um, the plaque's all going to start sticking to the walls. And then our last step here is the actual blockage itself. So we've already got thickened vessel walls. We've already got plaque building up all around our vessel walls. So now what's going to happen is a piece of that plaque is going to break off and after it breaks off the blood is going to begin a clotting process which is going to create even more clots around that um, chunk of plaque and then all of that is going to come over here and block this pathway. So it's going to cause an occlusion which cuts off oxygen perfusion to the heart muscle. Okay, so risk factors. So if you're trying to think of what causes coronary artery disease, just think about what affects the vessels. So smoking actually causes high blood pressure, which is our next risk factor, which remember damages the vessel's walls. So obesity, it's not obesity itself that causes coronary artery disease, but it is that they have higher levels of fat in the blood, they're gonna have higher blood pressures, and those are gonna damage the vessel walls and build up plaque. So with diabetes, Diabetes actually causes inflammation and the slowing of the blood through the vessels, okay? Hyperlipidemia, remember, the buildup of fat, which is the buildup of plaque in the vessels. And then those that have a family history of coronary artery disease are likely to get it. Okay, so the damage, the buildup of plaque, and the blockage in the coronary artery supplying the heart is going to cause serious complications in the patient. So if blood flow is cut off from the heart, the heart muscle is going to start to die, which is what a heart attack is, right? So acute coronary syndrome, this um, basically there's three different things. There's STEMI, and STEMI, oh, and unstable angina. So a STEMI is ST segment elevation. Okay, and this is going to lead to a near or complete blockage. This is known as the Widowmaker because this patient is most likely going to die. And STEMI is the partial blockage, okay, non-ST segment on that EKG. Um, unstable angina is a lot similar to the end STEMI, okay, and they might have some chest pain or angina when they're resting. And with these, we are concerned for cardiac arrest, that heart is going to stop, right? Okay, so next we're going to look at how the patient presents. Something to understand is that the patient may not have any symptoms until they have a heart attack or a myocardial infarction. If they do have symptoms, they may have chest pain even while resting and it might radiate to their left arm. They may have arrhythmias that will show up on that EKG. Um, you might feel an irregular heart rhythm when you listen to their heart or feel their pulses. They might have shortness of breast, breath, resting or an exertion. Um, they might have an elevated blood pressure, which is going to cause more damage to those vessel walls. So if the doctor's concerned that the patient might have coronary artery disease, they might order different tests to kind of check it out. So an EKG is going to help us to visualize the rate and rhythm of the heart. And you remember, you want to look for that ST segment elevation. Um, cholesterol levels, if they're higher, they're at more of a risk. CT scan, you can visualize the vessel occlusion and stenosis. An angiogram allows you to view inside of the vessels, and a stress test is going to show the heart's response to physical activity, which is the stress. So how do we manage coronary artery disease? Well, there's different medications that may affect the body in different ways to help. So cholesterol levels um, or cholesterol medications such as statins help to decrease the plaque in the blood. 
Antiplatelets and anticoagulants are both going to help avoid blood clotting when that plaque breaks off. Okay. Beta blockers help to decrease the workload of the heart. Calcium channel blockers help to relax the vessels and allow that blood to get through. And nitroglycerin helps to open the arteries and allow blood through, decreasing chest pain. All right, so there are different procedures that the doctor may order, such as an angioplasty, which is where they go in through the vessel to open the vessels leading to the heart. A stent placement, which is where they keep that vessel open with like a metal stent. And then coronary artery bypass surgery is where they're going to bypass this blockage by creating another pathway right around it. The blood can get through there. Please check out the title, um, the lesson titled MI Surgical Intervention if you want any more information about these different um, procedures. Okay, so it's important to educate our patients to quit smoking, stay active, eat healthy, control their stress, and manage their diabetes because these can all lead to complications with coronary artery disease. All right, so our primary nursing concepts include clotting, perfusion, and EKG rhythms. All right, so here are just some key points I want you to remember. Um, like first, coronary artery disease causes major vessel damage. Inflammation occurs, plaque builds up, and then it leads to a blockage. Different effects, acute coronary syndromes such as STEMI, and STEMI, and unstable angina are all results of coronary artery disease. Some symptoms, they may have no symptoms at all until they have a heart attack. If they do, they might have chest pain, arrhythmia, high blood pressure, shortness of breath. Um, to diagnose, we might um, the doctor might order an EKG, cholesterol level, CT scan, an angiogram, or stress test. Different treatments include medications such as statins or vasodilators, or different procedures such as an angioplasty or a coronary artery bypass surgery. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.